that I might AJ escape from this prison, the entire population cheered. Except for me. Now don't get me wrong, I liked the guy, but he could have told me this was why he'd had me smuggle in a shovel and the prison blueprints. But he got out. And no one really knew what to do about it. Except for one man. So that's you on their phone there, Detective. Oh, Chief, what is it? It's my brother, AJ. He's escaped from prison once again, and I need my best man on the job before I go on vacation. The Chief would be taking his annual vacation to Vermont. Chief, I just heard about a month ago. Nonsense, Detective. You just gotta have faith in yourself. I believe in you. Now get out there and find my brother. And thus the detective began his search for AJ. High and low. With all the skills of an amateur detective who'd only been working for several weeks. But there was no trace of AJ. You know what, detective? <sighs> Nothing at all, chief. Well, it seems the case has gone cold. I've only been looking for a few hours, yeah, sir. Yeah, as cold as that vile brother of mine's heart. A good try, detective, but it seems this is the one that got away. But, sir... I've been taking my vacation now. Can't wait to spend a week on the beautiful shores of that bordering nation without an extradition treaty. This seemed like the end of the line for the young detective. No wife, no kids, a downtrodden apartment on the bad side of town, and to top it all off, the fugitive he'd been searching for was probably, at this moment, halfway to a bordering nation without an extradition treaty to the U.S. 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 Hold it right there, A.J. Detective, it seems you finally caught on to my rules. No, I was just following your brother, the Chief. Oh, look, there's the Chief now. <laughs> you actually fell for it! <laughs> AJ would later come to hate the irony of that statement as he tripped and fell right back into the United States. They say that the last thing AJ ever said as a free man was... Welcome to Akron After Hours. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Akron After Hours. We got a great show that is still <laughs> rendering at the moment. Uh, so while we wait, I'm going to tell you guys some tales of the unfilmed, which is basically uh, sketches that were pitched and were amusing, but also a little bottom of the barrel. For instance, Bottom of the Barrel, a <laughs> sitcom about a sentient barrel and all the cruel things that people did to it. There was also Sack Lagoon, which was the story of a support group for people who couldn't go out in the open without wearing burlap potato sacks over their bodies. <laughs> that was a weird one. And there was also Them Restless Earbuds, which was... You know, I'm not even going to talk about that one. Oh, look! The episode's finished rendering. I'm going to let you guys enjoy. I'll get right back to you. This is not even funny. I know, but the people on TV think it's funny, so it must be. I feel like my brain is... <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Steve? It's a sweepstakes to be in a sitcom. Sweepstake? Now, who would have thought of that? Really, Steve? <laughs> Sitcoms are the worst. Well, too bad, because I already signed all four of us up. What do we have to do? We have to be on a sitcom! <laughs> Guys, this is going to be so great. We're going to be on a sitcom. But what are we supposed to do? Yeah, that's a great question. There's a lot more to a sitcom than just sitting on a sofa watching TV until your eyes go numb. Hey guys. Maybe if we split up and look around the house, we'll find something. All this sitcom thing is making me really hungry. Oh. oh, it's just you. You scared me there. How did you know I was hungry? 
So you brought a knife. What are you gonna do with that? This is fun, right? People in sitcoms do stuff like this, right? <laughs> oh, hey, did you want to come in? Why would you do that to my fort? Man, I can't believe how brainwashing and mind-numbing this whole situation feels. <laughs> oh, coming to join me? I know you must be having as much fun as I... What are you doing? Now, who's gonna help me clean up this mess? It's the only reality show with a death count in the hundreds. Back and bigger than ever, it's High Noon All-Stars. Every episode, we have a deal between some of the toughest and meanest in America, and our best duelists from past seasons are coming back. Vernon Voulon served up three victims back in 2010. I'd only been to a few firing ranges before the show. I never expected to be that good. Vernon's family loves what he does. I've been helping Vernon draft as well. And he's gonna be facing up against the lone hombre, Carlos Santiago. Carlos has no family whatsoever. Carlos doesn't speak a lick of English. You just let me talk for him. I don't like Carlos. I've never met him. But you can never trust a man with such divine calves. The two duelists get to meet up before the big match. Psych. <laughs> Whoa, 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 Vernon whoa, whoa, whoa. better keep his eyes open because ain't nobody gonna get the jump on Carlos. He is the reigning champion for a reason. We've set up some targets for our gunslingers. I'm gonna pretend this can is your face, Carlos. Whoa, 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 I was just nervous, I was nervous, and... Whoa! Okay, okay. It, it, it helps him calm down, trust me, trust me, it, it helps. I'll show him. I'll show all of them. Carlos, kind of name is that anyway. Get you and your beautiful calves. Hey, Vernon. Do you think we should give your car to your uncle or your brother? What are you talking about, Tyra? I'm gonna win, and he's never gonna win. So I'm not worried about the will. Vernon's mad at me, but I'm just trying to be realistic. I didn't even want him to do this show. I told him he was gonna die. Carlos has been wanting to be a cowboy since he was seven. Now he kills on TV. Carlos used to rustle cattle from Santa Fe to... What, what, what are you doing? What do you mean I can't talk about it? What do you mean it's illegal? It is a living! It's go time. I love the atmosphere of a good duel. The excitement, the fans who can't wait to see me shoot a man dead. Best feeling on earth. You like the ride, Tyra? It's almost high noon. For the deal today, the legally exempt murderers chose Akron, Ohio. Yeah, it seemed like the perfect middle ground between Mexico and Canada. I'm gonna wipe the smirk off his face. We'll be right back after a short commercial break. Okay. First mission all on my own. I've got this. I just need to remember to stay incognito. Gotcha.
Starboss, I think we may have a problem. I think there may be spy here. Yeah, I understand. I'll find out what she knows. You're going to tell me everything you know. I'm not going to tell you anything. We'll see about that. <gasps> now, why are you here? All right, all right. I, I'm a secret agent working with MI6, and I was sent here to discover the whereabouts of a man named Mr. Bond. A ridiculous story. <gasps> okay, okay. I'm American, and I was sent to investigate the illegal human experimentation to create super soldiers. That story was more ridiculous than the last one! No! Bueno, suficiente. En realidad, soy un agente secreto de México, y yo estoy aquí para investigar la organización criminal que se llama... Burrito Trump. Really? Why didn't you say so in the first place? Yeah, I've never trusted Burrito Trumpet, that's why I never read that. I thought this was about the money laundering scheme. Well, you're free to go. You're a good comrade. I don't want to get in the way of such an important investigation. Gracias! My oh. clever brew is blacked. Oh. Now I can get to work on my real mission. Why didn't this thing save? Ugh. Hey, Jake. Hey. What's wrong? I was typing for the script for this class and it, it didn't save. Like, whatever. Can't you just retype it real quick? I could, but I'll, just, I'll take the zero. Like, whatever. Ugh. Well, does that mean I can use your laptop to write an after hours sketch? I'll just take your silence for a yes. She had a heart of gold, but that was soon brought to an end by the town villain. She was set out for revenge to look for her father's killer. Emily? Who died? The murder took place in a 1950s flower shop, whom the girl's father had owned. On that cold day, her life would never be the same. Whoa. Some pretty deep stuff, man. As she set out to find her father's killer, she goes to the scene of the crime. You know, for all that working out, I really could use a bite to eat. This mystery can wait. I think I'm gonna go to the scene of the crime restaurant. The woman makes it to the scene of the crime and finds a bunch of clues. She has a suspect in her father's murder case. Murder case. I don't think Emily can hear me, but... I think she is narrating my life story. If so, why is my dad dead? And why my girl? She finds her father's leather jacket and wears it in remembrance of him. What is happening? You know, something weird happened to Ben a couple days ago. I wonder if Emily had anything to do with it. She looks down at her shoes and remembers the day her father got her those for Christmas. Okay, so I only wear high heels on Saturdays, so I'm gonna say that's a no-go. She is so outraged by everything that has happened that the only thing she can do is start screaming. Ah, I'm so sad right now! Ah! She might not be very tall, but she knows that size does not matter. She is more, more I say, more than willing to solve this case. She will be the best detective that she can be. Why am I a woman?
Mr. Martin, I'm so glad you're here. We're running late. Is there any way we could start? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Great to meet me, too. Hey there, everybody. Sorry about that delay we just had. Hey there, everybody. How are you doing today? As I was saying, today we have a special guest, Mr. Leslie Martin. How are you doing, Leslie? Can I call you Leslie? Well, I'd actually quite prefer if you didn't. Well, Mr. Martin... Please, please. Mr. Martin was my father. But... Okay, so you just got done with your world tour from the release of your latest album, Down Under a Rock, which has been selling rather poorly, actually. You see, they keep saying that, but you'll actually find that Leslie Martin is in the top ten searches on the internet still. Yeah, but that tends to stem more from your violent outbursts towards paparazzi and other musicians. Can you talk about that? I thought we were going to keep this focused on my music. I was, I was just trying to go with the conversation. No! Okay, let's, let's, just, let's just get back to it. Get back to it. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, folks. So, Leslie, this new album. What did I say about calling me Leslie? But, but you just said... Not on the air. You think I want every Joey and Sheila calling me up going, Oh, Leslie, you're my hero. Sign my baby. Leslie, he's your son. You have to talk to him for at least five minutes. I don't need it. It's ruining my personal life, okay? Thank you. Let's just get to some callers. First, we have Alex from Philly. You're on with our guest. Hey, Leslie. I just wanted to say I bought your new album and... Oh, I'm glad to hear you're enjoying it. Oh, I'm not. It's all just a bunch of animal noises and city... Some people do not understand that. Oh, okay, um... Our second caller is Jordan from Juno. No one even cares about your music anymore, you British hack. You haven't been- Look, people, I am from Australia. I... I may not be welcome there anymore, but I am still an Aussie. Okay, look! Phil from Sydney, you're on the air. Hey, Wes, it's Phil from down the way. I was just meaning to ask. Does your mom- Really? My mom? You mother I'm, uh, I'm done. This is it. It's over. It's over. Oh, I was just gonna ask if she still lived in Bradbury. Gah! Long time no see. How's evil going? Well, today... Gah, your letter from the Evil Club is here. It's a council, not a club. Gah, we received your application for the Council of Evil, and do not regret to inform you that your application has been denied. You're just not evil enough. Not sincerely, Balthy. Dear Council, I have to take this call. Can you save my seat for me? Mm -hmm. Sure. Is this seat taken? It would be pretty evil not to save that girl her seat. No. What? You said you were going to save my seat for me. <laughs> Well, we just can't let you in because all those things you did technically aren't evil. What? I mean, your name is literally Hug Backwards. My mom likes that name. We just can't have someone like you in the council. It's, I would say, no offense, but I want offense to be taken. So, hard feelings. You. Hey, I'm gonna go get something to drink. Do you want anything? Yes, please. Yeah. Cool. Matt, how was your day at school today? Am I adopted? Peter, can you come back here for a second, please? 
What's what's wrong? Is everything okay? Come closer. Hmm. He used the A word again. Matt, how many times have I told you there is no swearing? No, not that one. The, um, A-D-O. Adopted. I know how to spell. I learn things at school, you know. <sighs> what kind of education system actually teaches kids? Your guess is as good as mine. I remember the days when they just gave us a break for seven hours. And I learned a lot of things. Like, I'm adopted. There's that word again. <laughs> Honey, why would you think you're adopted? I look nothing like you two. Kids at school are always calling me Flat Matt and saying I'm badly drawn. And some kids used me as their art project today and they only got a D plus. The teacher said I looked like a caveman drawing. Oh, honey, that's terrible. Peter, what is so funny? I'm sorry, but I'm looking at him now and I realize he really looks that way. That is not helping right now. I don't want to go to school tomorrow. Honey, you have to go to school. We'll take you. You know, I really just love how we always have to arrive at everything last minute. What? That's somehow my fault? All I'm saying is you really didn't need that fifth waffle. Where's Matt? I don't know. Matt? Where is he? I'm, I'm sure he's fine. He's 2D for crying out loud. Oh, I see. He's just your 2D son. He's not three-dimensional enough for you. You know what? Maybe I'd feel a little bit better if... Our son wasn't a cartoon! What is that supposed to mean? Look, Lisa, every time I take Matt out, people are always staring and taking pictures like he's some kind of mutant. A mutant? Um, you know when a, a doctor comes in and tells you whether or not the baby's gonna be a boy or a girl? Well, I didn't expect our kid to come out as a second grader's open house drawing! Mom? Dad? Is everything okay? Matt? Thank goodness you're okay! Hey there, buddy. Watching some cartoons? All right. Look, I know you've been having some tough days at school, and look, the truth is, I used to be animated myself. I was just a 2D kid in a 3D world. Really? No. I was just telling you that so you'd feel better. Good night, buddy. Don't stay up too late. You guys like what you saw? I liked what I saw. So you should like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be seeing you guys next time. See this shoe? Goes for about a, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks. See this suit? It's another grand for you. But not everything has to be so expensive. Hi. I'm TV Stockton Lovejoy, and I have a terrific opportunity just for you, boys and girls. It's that pale blue dot. That's, that's Earth. Earth. Luckily, I have my human flesh suit. With it, I look just like any normal human being, but without it, well. Ew. If you didn't like that, just imagine how Earthlings would react to that. Let's be frank here. Human flesh suits are quite expensive, but here at Stockton Lovejoy's Flesh Suit Emporium, we have two philosophies regarding our quality flesh suits. A. We provide the best quality flesh suit that any alien species can have. And B. You don't have to empty your wallet, or your bank, or your vault in order to afford it. C. To infiltrate the humans. You need to look the part, and that means you can't have any holes in your disguise. Hey there, champ. How are you doing? Oh, gee. I think something's wrong with their vocal recorder. Hold on one second. Just, uh, okay. And there we go. Why, thank you, Stockton. So yes, our flesh suits, they can be used for Halloween costumes, business brunches, and social gatherings. Also invading the Earth. Come on down to Stockton Lovejoy's Flesh Suit Emporium. Because after all, we don't stock a ton of them. <laughs>
This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. To find out how you can make Emmy-winning media, visit the UA School of Communication online. ZTV. Make media. Make a difference.